What's up, big dog? What's up, my dog? <laughs> cool, and cool and good to see you. Man, good to see you too, my dog. Everything been good. Yeah, maintaining the game. You and the fam good? Yeah, everybody good. That's what's up, man. I like what you did uh, a couple of weeks ago with Unc. I was just scrolling and seeing that pop up. So that's what you always do. So, you know, let you know that, that it ain't going unnoticed, man. What's your ass in? You didn't hear me? Yeah. Oh, what was it? What video was it? Oh, uh, when you and Unc had linked up and got in the oh, studio. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Dog, yeah, that was real. I ain't going to hold you too long, man. I'm going to go and jump into it for sure, all right? Uh-huh. All right, we about to get a taste. ATL presented by Remy Martin. Yeah, and of course, Hot 107.9 ATL representing the A. When you say ATL, man, you got to mention this guy right here and them franchise boys. Ladies and gentlemen, Parley. Man, what a go on, what a do, man. Glad to be here. My dog, welcome home, officially. Welcome yeah. Home. Uh, I, know I, I know I have told you this, you know, it's over the phone, but since now we're sharing this platform, I got to say this in front of the world because I'm happy to have you back down here in the lounge. Hey, man, it's a pleasure, my dog. You always stood in my corner, man. You know I'm always saluting you, brother. Real one on purpose. Facts, facts. How you love that. So what we've been doing is uh, highlighting uh, Atlanta's music scene, the different genres of the music. And we we took it all the way back to the bass music. We brought up the crunk movement. Uh, we brought up, of course, trap. We're going to get into the DJing. But uh, we highlighted the snap movement. And the snap movement, when we uh, put that genre against another genre, the listeners and the viewers on Instagram just set it up. So we had to tap in with the leader, one of the leaders, and the person that pushed that movement forward, Paul and to get you to talk about that snap movement? Um, well, if you ask me, man, I think I think that's the strongest movement, at least top three in the history of hip-hop. Um, that's why I say it. It's because I don't think no other movement has had a longer run than we have it. This is 2020. They still dropping songs, redoing White T, calling the franchise. Drake just redid, got the song called D4L. Everything you hear on TikTok is inspired by what we did. You know what I'm saying? So we can say we, we're a big part of what, what people go on at TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Since we dropped the first song, where it was White T in 2004. 16 years, our music has been duplicated. It has been used, recreated and has started more careers than any other movement that I know of. So if you ask me, I think this is, I think our movement and what we did is very important. I think it's the ground of what, what's going on right now. I agree with that. Let's talk about the sounds and, and the melody of, of Snap. What's the what's the purpose of it? Cause like, like how does it, you know how it hits your soul? Explain <laughs> that bro, what, what's, what makes the perfect Snap movement? Well, I, I'm a, I have to do the disclosure first. It's not called snap music. Mm-hmm. It's called pool panda music. All right? The word snap came in from the RAA. Um, like I think it was 2006 or seven. Um, at the time, um, we had Lean With It, Rock With It, D4L had Bitch You Can't Do It Like Me, Laffy Taffy. Um, David Banner had a song, Lil John had Snap Your Fingers, Cherish had a song. So. If, when you looked on the billboard, all these songs were snap songs. So that's and they had snaps in it. So that's why they give it the snap music um name. But if you pay attention, YT didn't have no snaps in it. Oh, I think they like me to have no snaps in it. You see what I'm saying? It was it was the sound. You know what I'm saying? And the sound we had came because we was using Fruit Loops. And at the time, nobody knew where Fruit Loop was. All the producers who was making beats um uh, was just transferring from the eight tracks to the beat machines. And the keyboards. You know, we didn't know how to do none of that. So we got Fruity Loops. And on this Fruity Loop program, it was a free download program. So all the sounds are like the key sounds, all the sounds that nobody used. So we took the sounds that we had and we made it work for us. You know what I'm saying? And we took, we turned them sounds and started doing songs. And them songs got big and then everybody started jumping on Fruity Loops. But when we started, we only did music for the Pookie Bounce. Like it didn't, it, we didn't do songs and try to take it to the east side. We're going straight to Bankhead to the pool palace. You know what I'm saying? We didn't care about being big time rappers. You know what I'm saying? We just wanted our hood to hear our music. 
I'm glad you brought up the West Side and Bankhead because for our national and our worldwide viewers, you know, somebody's like, Pool Palace music, what is Pool Palace? And that's a famous club in the A-Town. What is it like a night in the Pool Palace? What is that like? Okay, well, first off, I got a shout out to the Pool Palace, got a shout out to the West Side Bankhead. Um, got to give an RIP to Jimmy, the club owner of the Pool Palace. Got to give an RIP to Shot and Low and an RIP to Buddy. You know what I'm saying? And all the other fallen homies who gone home been gone for Bankhead. But who Palace has brought you groups like the Franchise Boys, D4L, Shot Boys, uh, uh, um, um, Shawty Low, uh, Yola, um, K Rap, and BHI. Um, we brought, brought you producers like DJ Plug, The Beat Monster, KC Beat Monster, um, um, Mark Beat Monster, um, Corny Cash. Like, I can go on with names and names and names. This, what we did at the Pool Palace birthed a movement that spark and, and the branches spread and it start touching all kind of other people on different sides of town. But you come in there, first off, when you come on Bankhead, you ride down. From out, from going home to, to the pool palace is gonna be packed. Now you gotta take your pool palace, I mean the bankhead ain't there but a two-way street. One way down, one way, one way the other way. All right. But it's gonna be packed. Every gas station that you pass on the way to the pool palace is gonna have 15, 20 cars in it. You know what I'm saying? People swerving. You, then, then you're going to see 15, 20 people walking to the club. When you get into the club, there's no party. Nowhere. If you ain't nobody special or a big homie in your hood and nothing like that, you won't get in the front. I don't care if you are a rapper or a big time celebrity. Big time celebrity got no respect at the pool palace. Mm -hmm. You had to be from our hood and you had to have a hood fight. You see what I'm saying? So you get in, um, you walk in, it's packed. People jump in the back gate just to get in the club. But when you get in there, it's packed. It's shoulder to shoulder. You got when you walk, you got to turn sideways and walk past people. Ooh. Then you got then you got DJ T Rock. Yeah. Shout out to DJ T Rock, the DJ who broke every music, every record. The only DJ I have ever known personally in Atlanta to break records. I'm not right. talking about play them. I'm talking about to break them. Song that you never heard in your life. You finna hear it ten times a day. T Rock was the only person I did that. So shout out to him. And then when you get in there, it's just going to be a big party. Like, everybody was having fun. Everybody was partying. Everybody was dancing. You know what I'm saying? So the pool palace is like the landmark. You know, Bankhead, the capital of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. That west side, that real A-Town. Mm -hmm. How you thought that? Since we're talking music, Paul, I got to ask you, man, who, like, inspired you uh, musically-wise? Uh, being funny, dog, besides just listening to the music that everybody played, I really wasn't into music. You know what I'm saying? I was one of them kind of kids. I like to go outside and get me some stuff and play in the woods and, you know, do boy stuff. You know what I'm saying? I really, I really went into music. Um, until like my 10th grade year, I wrote a poem. I ain't gonna say a poem, it was like I wrote a verse with no beat. So that's why I call it a poem, man. Um, this ended up being my first hit. It was called Money. Um, and this song was the first song that I ever recorded in my life, and it was like it's like a, a smash underground hit on the west side. We're in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? And that kind of projected me into doing music. And then Pimp heard the song when we was in high school, and that's what started him to produce it. So Pimp started making beats, then he gets me to record that song, and um, it take off from there. Um, when we did it, we was in college. We were recording money. So um, second semester of our freshman year, Pimp stayed, um, stayed home. I went back to college, and the song kept get going, getting um, growing growing and growing. Then when I came home, we recorded a song called White Tea. So that summertime, I would do shows to perform my song Money, and me, Pimp, Buddy, and Jizzle would perform White Tea as like the open up song for Money. And White Tea jumped off. Six months later, we had a deal. So I really never really wanted to be a rapper. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, Master P, No Limit, definitely, definitely them was a big part of my childhood growing up and stuff that I like. But you know, um, Cash Money, Day and Family, um, shout out to the Diablos from the West Side. You know, mm -hmm. I like the gangster music, you know what I'm saying? I, I like the, you know, uh, 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 Death Row, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I like the gangster music. Truly, Paul, hey, speaking of being a gangster, you're a true gangster, man, and you keep it real as well. Uh, I see you staying close to your community. How imperative is it for you to be that staple? I think everything that happens major 
has to start somewhere. And usually it starts small. And, you know, I get a lot of calls, and a lot of people ask me, hey, Paula, I want you to come over and help us do this and help me do this and help me do this. And I do, and I help a lot of people. And over the years, as I look at it, it's like, why am I helping other communities and more other people and I'm not taking that same energy and focus and focusing on my community? Because my community places that people who I know and my family member grew up in, you know what I'm saying? So I have to attack the police brutality there first. I have to attack the housing there first. I have to get the street people back connected in the community, helping the older people and the less fortunate. I have to start right there. When I clean up my house and my hood, then I can go to somebody else and tell them, well, these are the things that I did over here and maybe I can help somebody else. So I always just felt like I, I got to start in my own backyard first. Salute. We saw you got on the ground when it came time to uh, elect local officials. We see you out there on the football field. Speaking of which, did y'all win that game a couple of weeks ago? Uh, nah, man, we lost in the championship by one point, man. Dang, you gonna get him that? I tried to do a three-peat. Um, my starter quarterback, he won here. He was out of town. My, my starting wide receiver, but you know, no excuses. You know what I'm saying? We back on uh, February. Um, Ben, I'm glad you say that because I want to give a shout out to my business partner, Jabo, um, and my wife, Nisha Renee, uh, who helped put these, put these um, things together. And every year we have um, four events. We have, well, we have six events, but four of them are, is four different ones. And all of them are mental health. So we know we do basketball, we call it Mind Over Matter. Um, we do the football, which is flagging for a cause. We do um, dodgeball, which we call dodging depression. And um, we do bowling called knocking depression down. You know what I'm saying? So we're just trying to um, bring awareness to mental health, because I think that's a big thing that goes on in our community and with the black people. And I think if we can understand that, it would teach us how, how to think properly and how to go about doing things properly. So I'm just trying to raise awareness. And I think people don't touch on that. Um, they touch and talk about a lot of things besides mental health. And I think that's the number one thing that we need to touch on as a community. Truly. Man, I like those titles, man. And I appreciate you doing that for your community and, and taking it uh, from the A and continue to grow that thing all the way up. Yep, yep, yep. So what's one of your favorite movies of all time, Pale? Um, Besides my movie, The Trap, starring Bank Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> um, Funny movie, I like life. I like life. You know what I'm saying? I like life. Um, gangster movie, I like Scarface. Like, I probably don't seen Scarface over 100 times, easy. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, them probably be, if, I, if you had to say, get a movie and keep watching over and over again, you can give me Scarface. That was up, that was Thanks. up. So the real one on purpose, Pale is tapped in to get a taste. ATL gave us the true definition. It's called Pool Palace Music. The world right. might call it snap music, but you cannot mention it without mentioning the west side of ATL, Boy Homes on Pale. Man, salute, salute, dog. Well, we get up out of here, get, Tap in, dog. You know we got the podcast when it come out, OG Talk. So, you know, um, a lot of these stories, a lot of things I'm saying, we're going to give people time to tap in. We can start showing, sharing real energy, man. You know what I'm saying? Now, what's up? We need that too, man. Congrats on that uh, podcast too. Though. I want to stop by and just chop it up with your one T. I can't wait to get you. Have to get you, have to get you on there. Your OG. Now, what's up, Pale? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna, right, when, I, when I pull up, I'm gonna get my real purchase my real one on purpose hoodie. I can't wait. I can't wait. Hey, hit Nisha Renee. She make all these. You know what I'm saying? Real on purpose, solid on purpose. So we got you. Just let me know what colors you want, hoodie, and what color letters. We got yeah. you, dog. 1,000. Pale, representing them franchise boys, tapping in. Long little buddy. We catch you on the next episode, big dog. Bye, homie. All right, peace.